Katie speaking at Katie Conf. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> um, Hannah's going to be talking about, I'm assuming Go, because puns in talk titles are amazing. Yes. Yep. Yes? 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 Okay, yeah. cool. I can talk now. Okay. Yes, go. Can you hear me? Yes? Hey. Okay. So, um, the whole theme of WootConf was talk about something that you like doing, basically. And currently, I'm all about learning, so... I gave myself a stupid challenge. I said I'll learn Go in two months <laughs> um, through the means of Arduino and GoBot. Now, I've never used Arduino before, so that was maybe a bold challenge, but we'll see how I go. Okay. Um, so, Go, it's a programming language. I'm sure you all know that. It's created by Google. It's open source, and most importantly, it has an adorable mascot. Um, so, it's a compiled language, which is very different to what I've been learning previously. I've spent most of my time learning Python. I did a bit of Java in year 12, but that was a long time ago. So first things first, I think Chris mentioned this. Um, hello world. So um, this is from the introductory Go docs. It seems easy enough. You import a strings package, um, and then you basically print your line, hello world. OK, easy. So compile and run. Uh, Turns out that uh, in learning Go, I got to learn quite a bit about Bash and Git as well. So <laughs> I'm new to programming, uh, so I'm pretty much new to Bash as well. So in doing this, I realized that I had to be open to what I was going to learn incidentally to Go, but I also needed to keep an eye on the prize. It's really easy to get distracted and learn about other things, Bash and whatever, instead of learning Go. Um, but I went through this. I worked out what the dollar signs mean. They don't tell you. Um, I'm sure you all know. Um, and yeah, so I ran it. Um, so this is the first time I tried to run my Go program. First install failed because I actually hadn't set my Go path correctly. Um, and the second one failed because I'd set a Go path, but the directory I'd set it to didn't actually exist. So when I worked that out, Yay, third time lucky. Hooray, hello world. Um, so at this point, I'm basically an expert in Go. <laughs> so we can move on to the fun stuff, right? Um, confession time. I've already mentioned this, but I've never touched an Arduino or anything similar prior to doing this. I didn't study electronics in high school. We mostly did sewing and woodwork, um, cooking. Um, and everything I knew about circuits and resistors and all that, it was theoretical from physics. It was drawing things on paper. Um, I now wonder why they didn't just hand us some circuit boards and some wires and let us go to town. Um, but I went to a public school. Maybe it was a cost issue. Incidentally, I definitely retrospectively appreciate the good that's done by programs that let young girls get their hands on physical tech like this. It's amazing because I didn't get that chance. But I'm doing it now. So um, just a side note, um, I can thank MYOB for me uh, even having this kit. I wanted it she-hacks. I think Kate might have even handed it to me. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. So after Googling what a breadboard even is, um, it's a white thing, um, I went about following some online walkthroughs, and ta-da, that's an LED. I made it light up. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, so currently it's not using any programming, it's pure electrical circuit running straight off the power. Um, but oh my god, did I celebrate this little circle. I was a grown adult dancing around my house, taking photos and tweeting and giggling and oh, I made a light glow, glow, oh, yeah, I made light. <laughs> um, opened up a whole world of possibilities for me. Um, so now I'm getting more, a bit more comfortable with Arduino, all the wires and resistors and what went where. Uh, it was time to bring Go and GoBot into the loop, pun intended. Um, so GoBot is a Go framework for the Internet of Things. You can use it to control Arduinos, robots, spheros, possibly your toaster, I don't know, uh, with Go. Um, it includes handy little methods like the one I've used here, which toggles the pin 
connected to the LED between high and low once a second. Easy. As demonstrated here, this was equally as exciting as making light. I've made light flash. <laughs> um, yeah, I can giggle for quite a while at making a flashing light. Um, here's where I came across one of uh, my biggest challenges and completely unexpectedly, I got addicted to blinking lights. <laughs> um, I moved from single LEDs to multiple LEDs to digits with displays. I learnt that I needed different pins, needed to set, set different pins from low to high, depending on which digit I wanted to control and which part of the digit I wanted to light up. I moved from LEDs onto buzzers and I was meant to be learning Go, right? <laughs> I was spending all my time working out what went where and which pin is attached to which LED and Googling and turns out that the mini functions calling GoBot methods were easy enough to manipulate, copy and paste and mishmash together that I didn't actually have to know what I was doing in order to get my Arduino rush. I'd become distracted by the bright lights of Arduino. I was learning a lot, I just wasn't learning the ins and outs of Go. Not ideal for this particular exercise, so I pivoted. Maybe LED-driven learning wasn't the best way forward for me. <laughs> books. You learn by books, right? Some people learn by reading. Um, I've learnt a lot about, say, the causes of the you know, Russian Revolution from books. Uh, but when it comes to learning technical skills, I'm, I don't learn by reading. I started reading this book and I actually got more confused because it wasn't reflecting what I already understood about Go. Um, had I understood it wrong? Had I missed a whole chunk of information? No, it just turns out that um, with a quickly evolving language like Go, books can get outdated really quickly. Um, Go had already moved on since this book had been written and it gave me a whole chunk of options that weren't relevant anymore. Um, so this is a still a good reference book, but it needs to be taken with a grain of salt and a check at the latest docs. So what's more up to date than books? The internet. Um, I turned to the online tutorial, um, starting from the basics with the official Go language tutorial, which has its own little sandbox built in. It's pretty cool. Um, now, before I move on to the next slide, I just want to give a disclaimer. The tutorial is really awesome, and I really appreciate that people took the time to make this tutorial. Um, but it's not without its issues. I'm a biologist in training. I've never learnt C. While I pushed through with the tutorial, I had to recognise that it was written by engineers, or I had to assume an audience of engineers um, on computer science grads who probably knew a fair bit about C. There was a lot of comparisons between C and Go, which I could ignore. Um, but I wasn't looking for a tutorial to explain what a variable was, what a loop was, but I don't know what a type declaration does. So I hit this and I was like, eh, type declaration does what I would expect. Mm. <laughs> Uh, luckily, this tutorial is actually open source. It's connected to GitHub. You can submit a bug request right then and there. I submitted an issue, and within a couple of weeks, there were two duplicate issues on this exact same slide. So I think what I learned there, I wasn't stupid. The tutorial wasn't necessarily aimed at me. It wasn't written for people like me. They potentially didn't even realise that this was an issue. And I had to keep telling myself, I'm not stupid. It's just a, a, you know, a misunderstanding between me and the tutorial. But you know, hopefully now there's a couple of issues up there. Someone might, if you can do it, go, go. <laughs> Explain what a type declaration does. Um, this is another example of the tutorial being written for someone else, someone not me. Um, I was fo focused on trying to learn Go and my headspace was all around syntax and, you know, how do I write a loop in Go? Um, turns out the Go part of this was pretty simple, it was just a loop. Um, 
but this feels a bit like gatekeeping. Um, this wasn't for someone like me. I've got a PhD in biology. I've never been expected to approximate a square root. Um, I have a calculator that does it for me. Um, I didn't want to have to understand maths like this in the middle of learning syntax. Um, but again, open loop, open source. Um, I know someone has actually submitted um, some suggested changes for this slide and I hope it get ex gets accepted and it might help people like me in the future. But that was just, I had to go have a sit down after this and <laughs> leave the room. <laughs> um, so at this point, I've learned that Arduinos are fun, but Arduino-driven learning might not be great for me. I'm gonna go back to that later. I've also learned that algorithms are frustrating in the wrong place, but might be handy for demonstrating concepts if I'm already familiar with the algorithm to start with. So, um, I know I understand, under, I submit my understanding by doing. So I took some of the things I'd already learnt and I turned to bubble sort. So I wrote a bubble sort function and some tests to go with it, with it. So what did this teach me? It actually taught me a lot of the things I wanted to learn. Um, how to set up variables, slices, loops, functions, packages, how to compare between things and testing. As an aside, it turns out testing in Go is really straightforward, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, so just by piecing together this function that I already knew kind of how it worked, I just needed to work out how to do it in Go. This was a really helpful way to pull together all the stuff I was sort of learning in different places. Um, at this point, I actually broke one of my arbitrary rules. I decided that this was an exercise in self-learning, i.e. I would avoid getting um, help from other people. Um, but you know what? I had access to someone who could review my code and make it better, thereby getting me on the right track from the very beginning. So, as you can see, it's an indent party over here, over there, much nicer, more readable. Um, so, my advice is, um, if you have someone available to review your code, tap that resource. In doing so, I now have a better understanding of how best practice um, and readability should be in Go. Um, and everything I learn from now on will build on that. So, what have I learnt? Um, I learnt that Arduinos aren't scary at all. They're actually fun to the point of distraction. Um, I found myself looking at electronic shops online. Uh, I also learnt that I'm more like a cat than I thought. The blinking lights are really fun, <laughs> really distracting. Probably chase lasers, I don't know. Um, whoops. I learned that my goal wasn't specific enough. Um, learn Go to the extent that I can control an Arduino to do what? Um, I was able to, to, to control it very easily, um, even before I learnt any Go, pretty much just knowing one other programming language was enough for me to piece together chunks of methods um, using GoBot. So um, I really needed to define my goal further. Learn Go to control an Arduino to do something specific. That said, it's sometimes hard to define your goal when you aren't fully informed like I was. So in that case, be flex flexible, um, which leads on to my next point. Changing your method is okay, great even. If it's not working for you, recognize that and move on. Uh, best practice, practice would probably be to document what wasn't working for you, um, but just really recognizing that it's not working for you and going on to another method might work better for you. That's pretty good. There's no point smacking your head against a brick wall, doing it one way because you think that's the way that you should be doing it. Um, I learned not to make tutorials make me feel stupid. I did feel stupid when I came across those two slides. I, I thought, oh my God, I'm an idiot. What am I even doing learning Go? I don't know what a type declaration is and I don't know how to approximate a square root. I can't be a programmer. <laughs> um, that's stupid. Um, the person who wrote that tutorial will have a certain background and you'll have a certain different background, they might not mash, that's all. 
Um, you can tell the author if you think something is hard to extend, hard to understand, or something's getting in the way of you learning what you're supposed to be learning. Um, reach out, it's the internet. Um, don't copy and paste code. Uh, it may be good for quickly fixing a problem that's not working, um, but copy and pasting from the internet, uh, there's a fair chance you haven't even read the code that you're copying and pasting. There's an even fairer chance that you haven't understood it. Um, at the very least, physically rewrite the code out uh, rather than copying it, but actually trying to understand what's happening and how it's fixing your problem will do you a world of good. If you understand something, you'll be much more able to rep replicate it and adapt it to make it do slightly different things. Um, finally, utilize available resources. As I decided I was um, doing this in, as an exercise in self-learning, um, I refused to let anyone else teach me what they thought would be useful to know, um, which was frustrating for some of the people around me, I think. I'd be like, la, 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 no. <laughs> um, now I'm going to absolutely discuss, talk, um, if they have great advice, I will be taking that on board. Um, it really did cripple my learning, not having other people be able to discuss this with me. Um, discussion is such a, a useful way of cementing your, cementing your knowledge, especially if you can explain it back to that person, you're probably on track to knowing a bit more. Um, and if you've got someone else who's really experienced, then absolutely let them, let them help you. Um, if they know about readability or best practice or get that in from the start, because there's no point learning something that's a bit broken and then trying to fix it later. If you can learn the, the good thing from the start, do that. Um, yeah, that's it. Questions? We have time for like three questions. Oh. There are no t-shirts with these questions though. Gee, I wonder who has a question. <laughs> um, okay, so the I come from a maths physics background, approximating a square root makes perfect sense as yeah. an example to me. And I completely understand why it doesn't to you. I could have worked it out, I just wasn't in that headspace. And but yeah. it was also not what you're trying to learn. No. So is there a space for tutorial, a, a tutorial, uh, sorry, a biologist's tutorial to programming that would have been more helpful here using, I don't know what the example would be, but an appropriate example that comes from background knowledge that you do have? Yeah, I'm sure there are lots of loops in biology, but I'm not sure. I, I don't think it even needed to be that complicated. Like, literally what they were trying to teach was a loop. Like, it didn't need to, it ended up being like, you just had to change those variables into your own variables, but it was written in such a way that it was like this brick wall. So all it needed was some more explanation. Um, you know, it didn't matter that that was Newton's rule for approximating a square root, really. It could have been x equals a, b plus c. You know, make it a loop. Easy. Can it I didn't need in? to be. Yeah, yeah. From a documentation perspective, the main thing that needed to change is they needed to take out the word simply. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was just I, I like... Quite, I'm, I'm, I'm a writer, that's what I do, I'm a technical writer. And the first thing I would say when reviewing that piece is take out the word simply. Because by using the word simply, you've set the reader up to think this is simple. Mm. And the problem is for some people it is simple, but you can't assume it is for everyone. And it just makes your reader feel stupid. I don't have a question, I just wanted to point that out. No, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I think I'd highlighted simply on the, on the yeah. thing. It was just like, it's not simple. Did anyone have an actual question? Oh, I'll come back. Burn. Questions are important. Questions end an exclamation point. No, question marks. Quest the other one. <laughs> so following on from that, what uh, advice would you have for open source projects trying to write better documentation um, as, a, as a learner? I'm not an expert in writing documentation, but make it clear and don't assume people have a background in engineering and computer science, basically. Don't use concepts that might be taught in even first year uni computer science or engineering. Like, obviously you have to look at your audience. If you're writing open source projects for computer scientists, 
go for your life. But if you expect non-computer scientists to be reading your documentation, don't use examples that they wouldn't have come across in their learning. That's all I'd say. One last question. Or explain it better. <laughs> hiding. Everyone's hiding behind things. Uh, I actually work at a university and actually help researchers and things on HPC clusters. Um, I see a lot of biologists actually wanting to do more and more programming. Do you think that perhaps these other disciplines should actually include computing programming as a module within their Absolutely. Their yes, yes. And I think they are more so now. I did an agricultural science degree, you know, getting on 10 years ago now. Really, it, was, it wasn't focused on even much data stuff until I got onto the research side of it, which wasn't taught so much. Um, but I know now, um, PyCon last year, they had a whole you know, data science mini conference that had people talking about how they were teaching undergraduates to code for data purposes. Um, so yeah, absolutely, I would have loved to have learned all this back then, but yeah. Please, please teach undergraduates to code, even if they're English majors, I don't know. <laughs> Let's thank Hannah again for a wonderful talk.